We're back on the road this April with our live show, Cocaine Cowboys. If you want to hear the story of Ireland's love affair with Colombian powder and those who made millions in the gold rush, join us in Galway's Town Hall Theatre on Saturday 6th of April, Killarney's INEC on Saturday the 13th of April and in Belfast's Waterfront Studios on Saturday the 27th of April. Tickets from venues or at mcd.ie. So this, of all things, is a classic gangland story. A um, suspected drug dealer is bundled into a car in Belfast, sandwiched between a number of men and driven at speed down across the border to what we can only imagine was going to be uh, he's owed money. Uh, He owes money, apparently. So he was going to be tortured and possibly killed. Uh, Depending on the amount of money, usually he owed, you know, if it was a small amount of money and others around him in his vicinity owned similar, he might have been, he might have been just kneecapped. But some sort of horrific fate awaited him had this car not been stopped on the M50 by the Gardaí, who'd been contacted by uh, their colleagues in the PSNI and given as much detail about this car as possible. Uh, thankfully, the roads network is such that um, there's AMPR along the way and it's fairly easy to track a car once you have a description of it. Yeah, I mean, what what's, what's seems to have happened is that the uh, the guy being described as a, a sports star, he's a guy in his mid-30s, um, he's been known from the sports world, star may, may be overstating it a to an bit, extent. I know his name. I know however, his name, but I didn't. Yeah, however, a well-known person uh, who also runs a gym and is involved in, in the fitness world, um, he seems to have met these guys in a pre-arranged meeting. Um, he drove there in his car, but he was also followed in, in that car by his, his partner, um, so she spotted him being bundled into this this jeep, um, and at which point she tried to follow it, wasn't able to follow it successfully, so but con- even towards the double towards exactly the border. and contacted the PSNI. So they knew straight away yeah. um, what they were looking for, and um, the car eventually was stopped uh, at the M50, uh, just off the M50 at the Bally Ballymun exit, um, up there near IKEA. People would might know from there, and when they stopped the car, they found uh, the the kidnap victim along with four men. And they also recovered a firearm during their search of the of the of the vehicle, um, and the men were arrested. So, I suppose y- you could say um, it's a bit like the banks. Like if 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 you owe a little bit of money, that's that's your problem. But if you owe a lot of money, that's the bank's problem. So this guy is suspected of owing a lot of money. He's known. Um, to the PSNI, um, he's under investigation for very serious crimes linked to organised criminality. And the suspicion is that this gang was looking to recover money that was owed to them. And to recover money, you probably they probably wouldn't have killed him. In no. other words, they probably would have injured him and left him under no uncertain terms. They probably possibly would have driven him back home. Yeah, I mean... Left him, dumped him somewhere over the border. But... Um, these things unfortunately happen in the underworld and these are the kind of the, the murkier end of drug dealing. Of course, the individual concerned who we're calling a sort of a former sports star, gym boss, is somebody who lives a very flash lifestyle, a uh, very public lifestyle. He has certainly enjoyed a lot of money yeah. um, or certainly it looks that way or that's what he portrays. Um, the six-figure debt that is supposedly owed is probably something that would keep you alive. It's actually kind of works the opposite way than the banks, doesn't it? Well, no, I mean... If Smaller debt will have you killed. You're yeah. actually better off owing a bigger... You're talking about the sort of the developers. Oh, no, I'm in, saying, in, yeah, in but, but that's what they used that, to say in the Celtic Tiger. Like if the if your developer owed 200 million to the yeah, banks, they couldn't, yeah. they couldn't let the, the, the developer go bankrupt because they'd never let their money. Yes. So they kept them going. Yeah. And sometimes with the drug dealers, if you owe them a huge amount of money, yeah. they have to keep you alive well, in you, order you to recover. You have a chance of survival, of course. Yeah. And and if, now, having said that, we have seen on numerous occasions that the debts transfer to somebody else on upon your yeah. death. And it's not a guarantee that you're going to be kept alive because you owe six figures. Um, there comes a time, I think, that, uh, you know, decisions are made. And obviously... You know, if you're bundling somebody into a car, there's a handgun discovered in this car that wasn't been brought along just, you know, as a plaything that was more than likely going to be used on this individual, whether he was going to be shot in the head or in the knees. 
thankfully didn't happen because of the intervention by the Gardaí. But the fact of the matter is that the debts can go on to be seen as being taken up by somebody else and they will then focus on them for the recovery of them. There's no laws. There is no... no there is no uh, laws. There no. is no receipts and there's no... Uh, you know, the, the thing about the, the criminal underworld, I was just talking to somebody there about it earlier on today as well, is that the debts, the figures are just come up often at the top of people's heads. Yeah. Sometimes these can be chaotic, paranoid individuals who are just completely and utterly convinced that you might owe them 600,000 when in actual fact, the deal that went awry only was to do with, say, 16,000 uh, euros. Yeah, probably, probably like the, the real world, but you can't call in a forensic accountant for your for your coke debt, yeah. can you, to, no. to, to justify it? I mean, and then you see, I suppose, in this case, um, the great difficulty in policing the criminal underworld uh, on both sides of the border. Mm-hmm. So this guy is bundled into the car. Presumably uh, his girlfriend phoned the police because she's terrified. Um, he's presumably terrified because he's coming under this pressure. He's saved, could could be his life was saved by the Gardaí. He, those guys are arrested, taken off in handcuffs, we presume. There was armed Gardaí, stopped them and he's rescued. And uh, how does he thank his, his, his saviours? Well, he says, I've nothing to say. Refuses to cooperate. Free, refuses to cooperate. Uh, uh, it's in an, just a matter of interest. So that is seen as ratting. You're about to be killed, shot in the mm. head, and uh, you're still not allowed. No. Give any evidence about anything like no. People are allowed. You, I mean, it's better that somebody kills you than you give a statement in relation to the fact that you're bundled into a car. It is such a bizarre. It is a world, bizarre kind of. Th- I mean, who do, who's who's who are you showing loyalty to? Yeah, who to are you then the loyalty to? I suppose maybe you you're showing loyalty to yourself ultimately. That and to even, your culture, really, because it is a culture. Possibly, but I mean, it's certainly un- unusual. I mean, what do you do, what do you owe the people who are recovering their debt in that manner? Maybe it's it's you know. It's if if people do give cooperate, then that's the end of their mm. their life in that world, you know, uh, one way or another. Um, so he returns to Belfast, refusing to give a statement. In Belfast, no crime has been committed because unless another statement is given that he was kidnapped from that point. So the PS and I have no involvement in it other than liaising with the Gardaí. And I would imagine giving this gentleman, if they haven't already, a threat to life warning, yeah. which is standard issue. Um, and the four men, individuals in the car who were arrested, there is a firearm uh, recovered. So undoubtedly that has gone to ballistics checking and any DNA that could be recovered from it. Possibly a file is going to the DPP in relation to that handgun. But all men uh, who bundled this gentleman into the car and drove him at speed towards Dublin are released without charge. Yeah, they're released without charge, yeah. yeah. It's very irritating to work as a guarder, wouldn't it? Well, it must the be. The drama of that, that yeah. moment that they pounce on that vehicle and save that guy's life and pull in those. And you see, the funny thing, of course, the frustrating thing for the guards is they, they these guys, they rescue, I mean, I'm not talking about this guy in particular, but they, they save people in those circumstances and the guards might you know, have them in the car and they chat away and tell them exactly what was going on. And But, you know, they're not arrested, so that can't be used in any court. And then they get them into the station and say, now it's time to, everything you told me there, now it's time to, to give a statement. To, oh no, I'm not giving a statement. So that must be a frustrating moment well, because... People I know who are working in that business would more likely say to you that the reaction is actually far from friendly and they don't yeah. tell even tell them what's going on without no. giving a statement. They usually just spit in their faces, curse yeah. at them or certainly call them every yeah. name under the sun. Yeah, I mean, and look, it, those those other four guys, they've spent the weekend in, in, in a cell, but they're out and about. Um, we know bits about them. We know that um, one of them has had a serious drug conviction and um, we know another one of them has a, a conviction for an assault of a guard, but they're not particularly names that ring out as being associated with any of the main criminal gangs in the country. Certainly there is a suspicion that they were hired in to, to grab this guy and put pressure on him by um, other major criminal figures in, you know, the, the name Mr. Big has been thrown out there. Um, however, 
that's not clear. Um, mm. But there is certainly does seem to there's be a suspicion. Or that's one of the areas that's been investigated. If Mr. Big would have been behind this, obviously, he is um, from the Kulak area. Mr. Big is called that for the reason that he is a big, major organised crime boss, probably the top target of the Drugs and Organised Crime Bureau over the past few years in the country. He's somebody who made hay over the course of the Kinahan Hutch feud and other feuds in his own area when he developed and grew his own network. He has certainly got a lot of dealings in the north of Ireland where he both supplies and sources uh, drugs and weapons and uh, undoubtedly he is one of the, uh, I think, most prolific cross-border criminals really that we yeah, I mean, talk about. Certainly he he very deep uh, ties to criminal organisations on the border, the border region in Newry and, and the surrounding area and all the way up to Belfast. And obviously, um, you know, the, in the case of Robbie Lawler, his, he, you know, he's suspected of playing a role in his murder that, that was carried out in Belfast. However, how strong that link is, it's not clear, but there is certainly a suspicion that these guys, these four men who were arrested and released were brought in as kind of outside contractors to put pressure on somebody that it is alleged owed money in relation to the drugs trade. How long more will Mr. Big enjoy that anonymity that we have become so used to granting him? I don't know. I mean, as, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's you know, is there... Is there a reason at this stage to be still so cautious? There is a reason, I think, in terms of, uh, you know people's criminal past is a factor in, in somebody being named. Also in the, the modern era of the internet, you know, do people know who he is, I suppose, is another, well, is another matter. Do, but, uh, you know, sometimes you have to question yourself as to why am I still in this place? Yeah. Um, it was clear that when he would have been before the courts, we were in that place and why we were in that place. But um, it's maybe something we need to revisit. And maybe so. Question. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, um, obviously there's reasons that we we give nicknames and have monikers for people. And uh, I think you always said they had to be named somewhere. Eventually. Yeah, yeah. And it's usually it's usually in the Sunday world. Sunday world. So anyway, in the meantime, this gentleman survived without a scratch and is back up in the arms, no doubt, of his girlfriend. Yes. Uh, but I imagine he won't be going to meet anybody too quickly, too soon. No, he won't be maybe going to meet people from the criminal underworld, but his his problems aren't ended by the fact that he's out now because he is still the focus of a very intense investigation mm. up in the, by the criminal justice system up in the north. And while he might be free now, there's no guarantee he will be in the long run and he faces serious legal peril still. Like if you didn't have 200,000 mm. with cash, yeah. where would you even consider? Well, if you, you see, I suppose it's, they people might look at somebody on social media and say, there he is living this, wearing that. But like presumably if your life is seriously at risk and his clearly is, if he was bundled into a car and driven down across the border, etc. Like you would hand over that currency that you have but I mean, you have a long way to go to get to 200,000 and for that to be accepted. And if that, I'm just plucking that figure, by the way, yeah. from the sky. It's a six figure sum. It could be the other end of that. It could be 800,000. Yeah. Like, it's very difficult to turn assets into that kind of... Well, I mean, we always, we always heard of the great example of Lee Cullen, who was meant to have owed Bomber Kavanagh two million, was it, or something? Yeah. And, you know, he, Lee Cullen would have had a huge amount of money going through his hands. Lee Cullen was a, a car dealer. He's currently serving a, almost 20 years, I think, for firearms offences in the UK. But he owed that money to Bomber Kavanagh mm. and Bomber Kavanagh kept beating him up mm. for the money, but he just couldn't come up with two million. I mean, no. two million is a huge amount of money. Blood from a stone. You just cannot get blood from a stone. And he effectively became a, an in dentured servant yeah. for Lee Cullen to try and work off two million qu I mean to for work Bomber off Kavanaugh, two, or yeah. sorry for yeah. Bomber Kavanaugh to work off two two million quid you know so But that kind of uh, slavery aspect does exist within um, the underworld and we don't probably talk about it too much because it's one of the the deepest secrets that nobody really who has been enslaved comes forward but you look at Cornelius Price and the compound that he had in the Gormanston area County Meath and it was there that you know 
it was certainly suspected that a number of people that were living on that compound were enslaved. To yeah. And um, by, by drug debts they had to them and, yeah. you know, they have no hope of, you have no hope of ever. I mean, you were completely under the power and the direction of a total psychopath who could yeah. order you to do anything. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, but no money would pay me to get involved nope. in all that. No, just get a job in McDonald's or something. And, a job yeah. in Tesco. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, or, yeah. or in, in Media House. And, yeah, <laughs> to Sunday you know. World. No, any, but yeah, like it's... <laughs> Run it's, a podcast. It's a horrible, it's a horrible, uh, horrible situation to be in. And mm. of all the, the calls that we get, it's always the most harrowing when you get it from the family of of a young man usually who's who's ended up in this huge debt and that debt is rebounded on the family who are then have to start sell, trying to sell houses and cars and beg and st- beg and borrow off mm-hmm. relatives to mm-hmm. try and pay off this sum that does seem plucked out of the sky and incidents like this show that their fears are real yes you know they're not a perceived fear no. it's not just a threat that we're going to kidnap your son bundle him into a car and take him off and do whatever yeah. like these incidents happen all the time it was really only that that uh, partner of the gentleman concerned alerted the police so quickly yeah. if that call hadn't been made as quickly if the PS and I hadn't reacted as quickly to uh, with a communications network to the Gardaí God knows what could have happened there and we wouldn't have really known no. where he was. Exactly. Going. No, these threats are not idle threats, yeah. you know. They're mm. absolutely not idle threats. Right. Don't do drugs, people. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Nicola. I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. And turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts.